Today we are talking about number sets. Before we get into it, first we have to understand what a set is. A set is a collection of objects or things, simply put. It's a group of things. And in blue I have two sets given, one set I've called V, one set I've called E. Usually capital letters are used to denote that something is a set. We put the items that are, go into that set in squiggly brackets. So set V is representing the set of all vowels. Let's look at what the elements are there. The elements would be A, E, I, O, and U. E meaning the set of even numbers. The elements would be 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on and so on. That set does go on and on and on. When we talk about how big a set is, there's two types. There's a finite set and there's an infinite set. And we can tell which one is which, if we have a finite or an infinite, based on the number of items in that set. And that's what NS means. NS is asking us how many items are in set S. So if I ask, what is N of V? we would say 5. Could you give me an answer if I said how many items are in E? And no we can't because E is an infinite set. V is a finite set. It stops. It's countable. So now a couple questions here. True or false? Number one, A is an element of V. And that little E looking thing in between the A and the V is this character and it means is an element of. So is A an element of V? Let's go look up at set V. Is A in there? Yeah it is. So this is true. Take a look at number two. Take a guess as to what this symbol right here is. It means not an element of. 28 is not an element of E. So is 28 in this group, is it even? Yeah, it is an element. So for number two, this is false. With sets, there are some special groups of numbers, special sets of numbers that we talk about. The first of these sets is the natural numbers. And natural numbers have a special symbol. It looks like this. It's like an N with a double line there. Or sometimes you might see it like that. Either way, it's denoting that it's sort of a bolded letter. That's standing for the set of natural numbers. And this textbook says that this set consists of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so on. There are many books that do not consider 0 to be one of the natural numbers, but in a group called the whole numbers. But for intents and purposes, with the IB text, we're using 0 as a natural number. The set of integers. Well, integers are represented by a Z and it usually has this double back here. So that stands for the set of integers. And the set of integers is all of the natural numbers and their opposites. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. The positive integers, we can give a special symbol to that if we use Z with a superscript of a plus, we're saying we only want the positive integers, and well, that's really the same thing as the natural numbers. Rational numbers are given by a bolded Q. I usually write it like this. You'll see it a little differently in the book. If it's a Q, rational numbers are all numbers that can be written as a fraction. 
So P over Q. One integer over another. If we can do that, we consider that number to be a rational number. And one thing here is the denominator can't be zero. The irrational numbers can't be written as a fraction, as P over Q. We don't have a special symbol for this, but they are all of the numbers such as pi or the number E or the square root of 2, square root of 7. These numbers are not perfect squares. Those are considered irrational numbers. And when we have a radical that is not a perfect square, we call that a sum. A weird little word, but it means it's a radical that can't be simplified into rational form. And then we have the real numbers. All real numbers, it's a folded R, you should be expecting that, and that is everything on the number line. From negative infinity to infinity. So 0 0.7, 1.2, 16, negative 17, all those numbers are real numbers. Everything listed on this screen, irrationals, rationals, they're all real numbers. Now, let's show that this number, 0.36, this repeating decimal, this decimal that goes on forever, is a rational number. Show that this thing can be written in fractional form. That's what we're trying to do. So what we can do is we can say, okay, let x equal 0 0.36, 36, 36. 6, so on and so on. That's what a repeating decimal is. Now, because it's repeating two digits, that's the hundredths place. So let's look at what happens if we have 100x. What's 100 times x? Well, it's 36.36. 36. 36. 36. And what that really is, is 36 plus x, isn't it? That decimal is the repeating decimal that we had to start out with. So we have 100x equals 36 plus x. That's an equation we can solve. Subtract 1x from both sides. 99x equals 36. Divide by 99. x is equal to 33 over 99, which reduces to 4 over 11. We have a quotient of two integers, 0.36 repeating, is a rational number. We can use this strategy to show that any repeating decimal is a rational number. And what we look at is how many decimal places are repeating. Two in this case, we multiply by 100. If it would have been three repeating decimals, we multiply both sides by 1,000. If it was one repeating decimal, we would multiply both sides by 10. That's all for this video. Hope you have a good time.